I'm going to be showing you a sine rule. So this can be used for any triangles, um, it, whether it be right angle or not. Obviously, right angle ones are easier. Just use Sokotoa, like I've shown you in other videos. But if you have an, uh, a triangle that's not a right angle triangle, or if you're not sure if it is, then you can use this. This is why I put this one, by the way. I support farming. In fact, you can call me Protractor. <laughs> yes, that one makes me so happy. All right, so let's name sides and angles. <laughs> uh, so if ever we have triangles, we often give them, you know, letters for the vertices, like A, B, C, but they could be whatever. They could be P, Q, R, F, whatever letters, okay? Keep that in mind. But we do have a convention for naming them. Whatever this one here, A, is, if this is angle A, then we're going to uh, very often call the side opposite to it little a, so like lowercase a. Just like if this is angle b, then opposite to that one will be side little b. And this is angle c, then this is side little c. Now it's hard to make that one look smaller than that one, but you get the idea. A better way maybe to name things is to call them like b, a, c. Then you can say, oh, that's the angle, so we can call it, or for example, c, a, b. We can say, hey, what's angle c, a, b? This is more descriptive. Because you could say, ah, start at C, go to A, go to B, and it's the angle that's inside there. That, so that's the CAB. That's another notation we can use. But for right now, let's just use this. We'll just say, all right, we name them like this. And pro tip, all three interior angles have to add up to 180, and that's a useful thing. Now, you're not necessarily asked just that. But this is going to be a part of you know some questions. Sometimes it's like, oh, and by the way, I know these two angles, therefore I can find the third, because I know they always add up to 180. So the interior angles always add up to 180. All right, let's keep going. So we have this thing called the sine rule. And again, don't get too tripped up with what the different letters are because these could be in different places. In this case right here, again, if I'm just uh, naming them like this, if this is capital A, then this is side A, this is side B, this then must be side C. They can be anything. I've just on purpose done it to where they're different. Just so you can see they name them all sorts of crazy things. But we have this thing called the sine rule. And this luckily is in your formula booklet, but it goes like this, A over sine of angle A. And that's equal to B over sine of angle B, which is equal to C over sine of angle C. So this, I'll write this down, this is in your formula booklet. Okay, so formula booklet, this is in. So this is good. That's good. However, there's another formulation. If these are if these are ratios, you could always flip it. So what I like to do is show you an alternate version. So I'm going to say or or you can do this, where you do sine of angle A over side A equals sine of angle B over side B equals sine. Oops, that wasn't a very nice equal sign equals sine of angle C over side C. This is an alternate one. So it's not on your formula booklet, but I, I think it's a helpful one as well. So basically to try to show you what to do, see, you need to know an angle and its opposite side. So if you know what A is, let's say you know this value and you know this angle, ah, then you can probably do this. Probably, but not always. So that's why I was saying use the sine rule when you know an angle and its opposite side. That's a nice thing to know about. But also, um, this pro tip right here. I think that'll be an important one to talk about. Hold on a second here. Let me just put a big square around it. So, as a nice little trick is that if I'm looking for a side, if the question says, like, hey, find the side, then I use the equation that has the side on the top. That's the first one. And if I'm looking for an angle, however, what if like I'm given some information to say, hey, what's angle C? Ah, uh, well, then I'm going to use this one. It's just, it's going to make the algebra a little bit simpler. So this is just an alternate one. This is the one that's on their formula booklet too. Let's do a practical example. So I have this math ponder sign of madness. Oh God. So this diagram is not to scale. They almost never are. And we have this ABC business like this. Find the length of side B. So what's the one we're looking for? This is the important thing to keep in mind. What is our goal here? Side B, which one is that? That's opposite to angle B must be this one. That's the one I want. 
All right, to use law of sines, I mean, it's probably going to work because I put this in the video for it. But on an exam, you won't be told that, right? So I'm just trying to show you. All right, let's 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 look at it as if we didn't know we should use law of sines. By the way, this looks kind of 90 degrees, but they didn't tell me it was, so I can't assume it is. In fact, I know for sure it's not because 20 plus 38, that does not equal 90. Right, because it would have to be 90 plus 90. So this is not 90 degrees. Now keep in mind, this diagram is not to scale. In case you're like, what, it doesn't look like? I just put the numbers here, okay? So find the length of side B. I want a side. So I'm probably going to use this version right here that goes like this, okay? So I'm going to write it like this. Now I need to know some things that I, I like to set up where I'm looking for what I want first. So I'm going to put the B on top. So I'm going to say B over sine of angle B. That's going to equal, well, some other thing that I know. I have to know something. And I know what A is. This is side A here, and this is angle A. So I'm going to say equals A over sine A. Now, you don't have to write it all in this detail. You could actually just skip. When you get used to this, you'll just start writing it like this. You'll say, ah, B is what I want. And I divide that by sine of, ooh, I know that angle. It's 38 degrees. That's good. In order to do this, I'd better know this. So I have to put in something that I fully know. And good news, I do. I know that 10 over sine of 20. That I can do. Well, to get b by itself, I just multiply both sides by sine 38 to put it up to the top. So that means I'm going to go b equals 10 times sine of 38 degrees, all that over sine of 20 degrees. I guess I should have a little degrees here. There we go. Let's do this on the calculator. So I open up my trusty old calculator here, I say new calculator, make sure I'm in degree mode. And I'm just going to do this, I'm going to make a nice fraction, I'm going to say 10 times the sine of 38 degrees, all that divided by the sine of 20 degrees. I end up with an answer of 18 point, I mean it's 000 whatever, but it's, it's pretty much just 18 degrees, right? So I'm going to say 18.0 degrees, so I'll say B. It's equal to 18 degrees. Nice. There we go. I got it. So that was actually pretty easy. There we go. Wait, not degrees. That was silly of me. They're not degrees. These are lengths. We don't know the units of them. These aren't degrees. Silly, silly me. There we go. Now we're supposed to find angle ACB. Now what does that mean? I'm just trying to get you used to this notation you might see. That means we say ACB. That means we want that angle there. Look, we want this angle goes like this, just to try to show you. We want this angle here. In other words, we want angle C. The reason we name it like this, it's better, is because what if you have all sorts of crazy lines like this, you don't know which one to see. Is it this one, this one, this one, or this one? But in this case right here, it's fairly clear we want angle C. Now what do we say? We said that the sum of all the angles equals 180 degrees. That's the thing we're going to use. We're going to use this pro tip from before. Remember I showed you all the interior angles add up to 180. All right, so then what do we do from here? Let's actually try to figure this out here. So we can just say, all right, well, I know that 180, maybe I'll write down like this, so I know 180 will equal my 20 degrees plus my 38 degrees plus my angle C. Well, 20 plus 38 is 58, right? So 180 equals 58 plus C. Therefore, C must be 180 minus 58. What's that going to be? 100. 22, I think it is, degrees. There we go. So now I have my angle. Oh, and I should probably name it properly. I mean, I call it C, but let's just use the notation data. It's often a good idea to use the same notation that's in the question. So the angle ACB then is 122 degrees. Hooray! And it's not approximate. It's exactly equal to, assuming these were measured right, then this is right too. There we go. We're done.